Hey everyone, Brayden here coming to you with a Mickey Views special report where instead of covering news from all over Walt Disney World, today we are going to be specifically focusing on the changes happening at the Deluxe Resort Hotels near the Magic Kingdom, and in particular, one of my favorite spots, the Grand Floridian and its lobby, which Disney is going to be switching things up at. They're gonna be modernizing it, but they claim they are gonna keep some of the classic feel, so we'll see what's going on there. Many fans, as well as former legendary Imagineers, are voicing their concern on the matter. We'll also take a look at the construction that's going on over at the Polynesian, where they are constructing a new DVC tower, which also has a very interesting aesthetic look, which has received some criticism. We've got a lot to talk about here. Disney is doing a lot of work at these hotels. Before we get to all of that though, we do have a correction slash update to get to. Yesterday I released a massive Disney news update where I let you guys know I was expecting the Walt Disney World Railroad to come back sometime around February, maybe even March. This was based off of what an engineer running one of the trains actually told me. He got out and went over and we were talking about it and he was saying they're having staffing issues and they're still doing lots of training. Also you still have Tron construction happening in view of the train, so we probably still have a month or so to go here. Here's the thing, after I was getting people's hopes up all year that, you know, Tron could open in 2022, that fell through. I'm just at a point now where I'm not going to get people's hopes up unnecessarily, assuming that Disney's going to get stuff open on time. You know what I mean? Setting your expectations is such a big part of enjoying things. So, you know, over-promising and under-delivering. I'm just sick of it at this point. So I'm like, you know what? I think the railroad will be February. That being said, it looks like we might have a Christmas present or late Christmas present in store for us here from Disney, as today Disney announced the Walt Disney World Railroad will be reopening, quote, this holiday season, which sounds very soon. This holiday season, that sounds a lot sooner than February to me. Let me know what you guys think. So for those of you heading down in January, it looks like I was wrong and you can expect the railroad to be back. Disney's opening something sooner than I expected. So, so exciting. Moving over to the news at the Seven Seas Lagoon, around the Seven Seas Lagoon, my favorite way to get to the Magic Kingdom from the TTC, where you park the transportation and ticket center, is not the ferry. It's not even the monorail. You guys know I love the monorail, but my favorite way to get over to the Magic Kingdom, it's the longest way to get over, and that is walking all the way around the Seven Seas Lagoon. Obviously, some people have a hard time with this, and, uh, you know, it's definitely not, you know, if you're in a rush, don't do that, but it is a very scenic walk. What you do when you get to the TTC is, instead of going through security, you just walk to the left along the pathway right before security, and that leads you to the Polynesian, where you have this beautiful sign, you cross the street, and then you're in the Polynesian Village Resort. What you used to do once you walk through the Polynesian Resort property is you used to take this walkway along the lagoon to the Wedding Chapel and the Grand Floridian and then on to the Magic Kingdom. Well, now Disney is building a new DVC tower at the Polynesian where the Spirit of Aloha Dinner Show used to be. And it is a large, large construction site which has eaten up that walkway temporarily. So as a result, to get from the Polynesian to the Contemporary, you do so by walking behind the construction construction site on a temporary walkway, which actually takes you across Floridian Way. So you're on the other side of the road, the road that you have uh, back there connecting all the resort hotels. And then you cross the road again back into the regular resort area. You basically cross into the Grand Floridian parking lot. It's not an ideal uh, setup walkway wise. You have to cross traffic several times. It's a temporary solution that Disney's working with here. Um, so if you don't want to put up with all that, I'd recommend just doing the ferry or the monorail. Those are awesome ways to get to the Magic Kingdom. But if you have the time, walking around the long way is a lot of fun. So that's what's happening insofar as the walkway around the Polynesian DVC site. As far as what's happening on the site of the future Disney Vacation Club Tower at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. When I was there last week, they had these massive drills uh, that were all set up and they were pulling dirt out of the ground uh, where I assume they're going to drive in pilings. They're basically working on the foundations and stuff like that. I'm sure they're also taking samples because we know around the lagoon in the past, Disney's had a lot of problems with sinkholes. In fact, it is my belief that the reason we haven't gotten reflections of Lakeside Lodge over where River Country used to go, if you recall, Disney was going to build a resort hotel there. I do believe at some point they found um, some issues over there having to do with the ground where they decided, eh, we're not going to build here. I do not think they canceled that resort due to funding issues. DVCs are a sure thing. Disney loves building DVCs. I think what happened is, is they really just moved that project. They just replaced that project with this one over at the Polynesian. That is what I believe happened there. 
So you guys have been taking a look at the site here. Uh, currently, it is just a bunch of dirt and they are working on some of the foundations and things there. And that brings us to the main theme of today's video, which is about how these hotel updates and these hotel additions, how they look. With this DVC tower, it has been compared by fans to something that you'd expect to see in any sort of upscale area. You know, it seems like a modern hotel where it has like that very basic five over one architecture going on. The construction style, it's, you know, very up to code, very economical, as cheap as possible, but it is a little bit more upscale than what you'd see at an interstate exit. Disney is putting in some theming, some stuff like that here, uh, you know, with the facade and stuff. It's definitely not the worst looking thing in the world, but does it look like it fits in the Polynesian? Does it look like a Disney resort hotel? I don't think so. Let me know what you guys think. Here's the thing. The Polynesian has survived these aesthetic updates that Disney's doing relatively unscathed thus far. They did update the rooms and they're continuing to update the rooms. Now they're working on the DVC ones. The new Moana rooms that you have at the Polynesian, the guest rooms, I think when they first released the photos, I was kind of critical of it. But the thing is, is that since these have opened, guests have loved them. They've gotten great feedback. It seems like a lot of people really like these Moana rooms. I will say they are pretty themed relative relative to the hotel update that I really dislike. If you guys have been watching this channel for any length of time, you guys have heard me dog on these rooms. These are the rooms at the contemporary, the new guest rooms, which I like to call the Ikea rooms, where they have these incredible stickers. Uh, it just looks very tacky in my opinion. I'll tell you guys a story. If you recall, last month, there was that big industry expo that I was at for themed entertainment, the IAPA Expo. One night, I actually brought some folks from the expo over to Disney to do some monorail hopping. We weren't there to drink or anything like that. I just wanted to show off Disney's resort hotels because I was telling them about some of the theming and the immersion and all of this. So we're going around. These are engineers in the industry. So I'm showing them the Polynesian. They're very impressed. The Grand Floridian, we went in the lobby and checked out the gingerbread house, the beautiful lobby. They were very, very impressed. We then take the monorail over to the contemporary where you have this beautiful piece of 70s architecture. They're very impressed. The monorail goes right through the building. We get inside there and one of them is like, what on earth is going on here? So the first thing we do is I take them upstairs to the roof, you know, where you can see all sorts of directions, almost 360 around. We were up at the California Grill. And then we headed down and we were walking through some of the guest levels where in the hallways now you have like this Incredibles wallpaper going on. And there was some vocal distaste shown towards uh, what you have going on in here. And the main area below is a clash of styles. It's a lot of that outdated Eisner era stuff where there's there's a shop both off to the side and then there's another shop sort of shoved in the middle area there. You guys know what I'm talking about in the main contemporary uh, area you have there. And I gotta be honest, I was a little embarrassed showing them the inside of the contemporary because, you know, I'm here shilling Disney to these folks, right? Shilling Disney's product and it's an aesthetic clown show in one of Disney's most expensive hotels. If you guys disagree, I'll show you guys some photos of what the main area in the contemporary used to look like when it used to be very classy, very upscale. It used to have a cohesive style, a coherent theme. Also during the holiday season, they used to do a big contemporary styled Christmas tree in there, which was so, so cool. No tacky character stuff. It was a place where people would feel like they should dress up nice. It was distinctly Disney because Disney used to be more than character stickers. The inside here is Disney. You can feel it. You have the Mary Blair mural going on. It's so awesome. There's all sorts of places to sit and relax. Everything is itemized to the end of the world. Oh, well, this square footage, we need to have extra shops here. You know, it wasn't all profit motive to the ends of the earth. It was actually somewhere that seemed like it was designed for you to have a good time and be able to relax. And here's the interesting thing. After I was done showing these industry uh, men and women, you know, the inside with the wallpapers and I was showing them the Ikea Incredibles room and everything like that, which is so bothersome to me because you can tell that at one point it was mid-century themed, but it just got budgeted down down to nothing. Then we head down to the updated contemporary resort lobby. And they're like, this is beautiful. You have all this real mid-century furniture and lighting. You have the historical photos up on the walls. You have the Steakhouse 71 Disney just did, which looks awesome. You have walnut veneer. You have places to sit and relax. It's actually mid-century. The lobby update Disney did here, it looks awesome. So clearly Disney is capable of doing the mid-century style and doing the 
the mid-century style at the contemporary resort correctly. It's just a question of why did this look not make it to the guest rooms, not make it to the main area, which you just have all these conflicting styles and this tacky, incredible stuff. It's just very, very interesting. And one explanation I've gotten from someone with knowledge of this project is that it was too expensive to do the rooms mid-century like you see in the lobby. First off, Disney's charging $700 oftentimes for these rooms, right? A night for these rooms. They should be nice and expensive, right? Secondly, over at Universal, they have Cabana Bay, which has a very mid-century style, very mid-century rooms. Everything at that resort is so, so well-themed, and that's not nearly as expensive as Disney's contemporary resort. So those Ikea rooms, they're just a mess. And the reason we see all this conflicting theming and stuff that seems more akin to what you'd expect from a Marriott or a Hilton rather than a highly themed special Disney resort hotel in a themed resort is because Disney has been hiring folks from Las Vegas, people from the broader industry to oversee these changes. It's a very simple input output thing going on here. The input is non-Disney people who don't understand the product and the output is very non-Disney homogenous results, which look a lot like what you see outside of Disney. And what makes them Disney according to Disney, is that there's characters. There's references to Disney characters on the insides of the room. They have character stickers. At one time, and you still have this at some of the resort hotels, the rooms are theme first. They're very immersive. They're an extension of the theme parks of Walt Disney Imagineering. Now, with these updated rooms, you have a very utilitarian, very modern look, and the theme is often secondary. It's nothing more than an accent. So it's utility first, followed by theme when it used to be the inverse. And that brings us to the big news of the day over at the Grand Floridian, my favorite resort hotel, which looks absolutely beautiful right now. Disney's amidst room updates, so you're seeing a lot of workers on site. There's a lot of work happening. The lobby is still mostly untouched. As you can see here, you've got the tree going, you've got the gingerbread house, and you have the awesome aesthetics uh, that are there year round, the very Victorian aesthetics in the Grand Floridian main building. This past week on the Disney Parks blog, it was announced Disney will be overhauling this lobby. This is what they had to say. Quote, 2023 will also be a momentous year for Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa as it celebrates its 35th anniversary, July 1st. The resort has been receiving some grand touches that weave familiar storybook charm into the Victorian elegance of this flagship resort. Guest rooms are currently being updated as we speak, with more to come as as the beloved Grand Floridian ushers in its third decade of magic. The ongoing renovation will also include an upcoming refurbishment to the lobby, which will maintain the classic theming you know and love with some fresh new enhancements. So firstly, on the topic of the Grand Floridian room updates they're talking about that Disney's been doing, do they look super Victorian? Do these new room updates look really, really Victorian, really classic? Not really. Do I think these rooms look cheap or look bad or anything like that? No, absolutely not. I think these rooms look quite nice, actually. And with these room updates, comparing them to the old, more Victorian rooms, you can see why Disney is doing these updates. Disney's target demographic sees the highly themed, very immersive Victorian-style rooms as something from Grandma's house, whereas the new rooms look very high-end, very fresh, something that can compete better with other luxury resort hotel options, like like the Four Seasons or the Waldorf. The issue is the style and colors that you're seeing in these updated rooms, they really don't seem to match the exterior a whole lot or the interiors, the common areas you have inside the hotels. And I think that it's these common areas that Disney's looking to update. Right now, if you look at the main building lobby, you have a very warm style. It's very warm, it's very classic. Insofar as what Disney's gonna likely do with these common areas moving forward to tie them in with these updated rooms, all we have to do is go to the second floor of the main building to the Enchanted Rose Bar, where Disney replaced the Grand Floridian Society Orchestra with a bunch of chairs to see what is like coming to the rest of the lobby, what we have in store for us here, where you have a very cool aesthetic. It's that blue color. It's not as warm. It's more cool, more streamlined. The marble has been cut out of the ground and replaced with rustic themed engineered wood. You have a focus on Disney intellectual property. What Beauty and the Beast has to do with the Victorian theme of the hotel beats me, but expect much of this style to extend to the rest of this beautiful lobby, where it'll inherit a much more modern, much more Wayfair-esque type of of look. 
Fans, along with legendary Imagineers on Twitter, have been rallying against Disney, sanding down the look of the lobby uh, to something more modern. But Disney's going to do whatever they want, right? They're going to do this. They're going to do whatever they want. I'm kind of wondering if it's going to end up being something like what happened to Fulton's Crab House in Disney Springs. If you guys recall, Fulton's Crab House looked like a ship. It looked like it was an actual boat on water. And then when they updated it, they kind of threw that out, right? They modernized it so much. It's very clear now that it's just a building mildly themed to look like a boat, whereas it used to be really something that looked like it was actually on the water. It's not even that Paddlefish looks bad necessarily, it's just this modern style, it's very homogenous, it just doesn't have much of a distinct style, a distinct look, and it would be unfortunate if we lose that in the Grand Floridian's lobby. Now, you can tell that Disney knows that there's a lot of people who are huge fans of the current lobby, that's why in the blog post they're saying that they're going to preserve a lot of the classic look, but in the past when Disney's made this appeal to the fans like they did with all the announcements relating to Epcot. What we saw in the end is we saw a large departure from the core identity of Epcot. Um, so a lot of that might be lip service. I do think that they are going to make some pretty serious changes to this lobby here. I really hope they keep the marble. The marble you have in there, all the art that ha they have in the floor is so, so cool. They cannot replace that. That has to stay. It's so, so awesome. The thing with this modern look we're seeing applied everywhere is at a certain point, you know, it's supposed to be a themed resort. Why have themed hotels at all? if, you know, Disney's not going to embrace that and it's just sort of going to be a subtle theme, a subtle thing. You know, like look at Disney's new tickets that they just unveiled. Disney unveiled new tickets. Uh, they used to have a 50th design. Now they're moving away from that. Now the ticket designs uh, on the card, it's a flat color with a character on it, right? And that's the way the hotels are going too. What Disney is now is you, the Polynesian, it's the Moana Hotel. Uh, the Grand Floridian is the Mary Poppins Returns slash Beauty and the Beast Hotel. The Contemporary is the Incredible Hotel. The intellectual property virus has invaded Disney's nicest, most expensive deluxe resorts. The resorts that are supposed to be the most upscale and the classiest. And I want to make clear, people are going to say, oh, Brayden, you're being negative. I disapprove of these changes, obviously, but it's not complaining like, oh, why are they doing this? I completely understand why Disney is doing what they're doing. I get it. I simply disagree with it. I'm mourning what we've gotten to enjoy and have taken for granted granted all these years at Disney, which is now being paved over by industry-wide trends and focus group surveys and this sort of stuff, we are losing the uniqueness here. I get why Disney's doing what they're doing. The guests Disney seeks to attract, which is not us, the new people that they're after, they want their room to have this modern trendy look. They'll shell out lots of money for the pleasure and that's what Disney's going after. Do we, the fans, appreciate rooms that are borderline the same as what you'd find in any major city? No. We we appreciate the classic Walt tier Imagineering, the highly, highly detailed spaces, but the guests that Disney's after don't. They want something that's trendy, that's modern, you know, that is like what you would expect, that sort of thing. Also, Disney knows what they're doing here. There is definitely a strategy going on. I think that Disney is making the rooms less unique and less highly detailed because the less the rooms are an extension of the theming you have in the parks, the less time the guests will want to spend in their hotel room at a subconscious level, and the more time that they'll spend out in the parks shelling out money. None of this is that clever or esoteric. We see what Disney's doing. It's the same thing with like how in Epcot, you'll notice there aren't a lot of places to sit and eat your food because what they want you to do is go from booth to booth to booth. If you're standing, you're going to eat faster, drink faster, get on to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. There isn't an opportunity to slow down. It's like what we see in the contemporary lobby. You know, you used to have all the seating. Now what do you have? You have a shop. Stay standing, stay moving because people moving equates to money, equates to making money. And that's what Disney's after. Um, and at a certain point, it just becomes too much, you know? All that being said, there are a lot of guests out there that want these modern styled rooms rather than highly themed immersive rooms. You know, while I'm saying that I think that the Incredibles sticker rooms are tacky, the guest Disney's after, a lot of them likely think that the highly themed rooms, like you have over at Port Orleans, for example, where your bed is made of logs, they probably think that's very tacky. The guest Disney's after wants each hotel to be familiar with little unique touches, right? So you go to a different hotel, instead of an Incredibles sticker, it's a Moana sticker, that sort of thing. Me though, I want 
want to be immersed in the theme. I want to stay somewhere worth the money. You know, you go to the Animal Kingdom Lodge, those rooms with the hand done wood carvings, all that awesome stuff. Do you know how expensive it would be to recreate that in your own home? It would be very expensive. So the room inherently has value, not to mention everything attached to it, the location, you being in Disney, there being animals out the window, that Incredibles Ikea room you have over at the Contemporary, you could recreate that room in your house for less than what it costs to stay there a few days. Unironically, you could. It's literally stickers that were printed out, cheap particle board laminate furniture, and a vinyl headboard. You could literally recreate this for less money than it costs to stay there. But why do people still stay there? Why is Disney able to get away with this? It's because the location is right next to the Magic Kingdom. So Disney's able uh, to make a lot of money just off of that alone, the location. Here's the thing though, if Disney's resorts are no longer theme first, and they're more focused on looking modern and clean, I can pay a seventh the amount for a nice, clean, modern room over at Spring Hill Suites in Flamingo Crossings and skip doing a Disney resort altogether. Because Disney, for reasons having to do with market research, as well as personnel that they've recruited, their rooms, their resorts are increasingly trending towards something that looks the same as what you can get at non-Disney resorts, where it's just as clean, you can use points to stay for free, and you're also just a few minutes away from all the action. And Disney thinks what makes their rooms different is that they have references to intellectual property characters in them. No, that is not what has made Disney's resort special over all these years. It's the highly themed spaces, it's the cohesion and the individual character you have at each resort where it feels like you're being transported to another time and place. They are extensions of the theme park, something that Marriott or Hilton could not do. That's what has made Disney's resort special. It's always been that the theme extends from the room to the landscaping, to the common areas, to the architecture on the outside. It's the cast members. It's the cleaning lady that leaves you a specially themed towel that you could only find at Disney. That is what makes a Disney hotel a Disney hotel, not characters on wallpaper. It's such a shame that we're losing the character and distinct style of these resorts in favor of flavor of the week, Pinterest trends that'll be outdated in a few years time. It's embarrassing. And the fact that Josh Tomorrow, Parks Chairman Josh Tomorrow, has signed off on all these updates over the last couple of years, I think it really goes to show, you know, what we can expect in the future in terms of what the executives are fine with theming wise. Um, it's very light on the theming, uh, very focused on the profiteering and the utility and and that's really not been Disney's thing or what's made Disney popular over all these years. And as Disney strays more and more away from that, at some point it is gonna come back to bite them. Uh, you know, we've said that for a long time and it hasn't happened yet. So I think Disney feels emboldened to keep going the direction they are, but something will break at some point, right? Because they're, they're just trending towards something that's so same old, same old um, at a certain point. It's just not gonna be something that a lot of guests are gonna be too interested in. The major change that Parks Chairman Josh tomorrow needs to make is over at Hotel Creative, the people making these decisions, not painting the inside of a white and maroon themed Grand Floridian hotel blue and cutting out the marble and cutting out the band that the entire lobby was specifically designed to amplify. So that's the latest news from the Grand Floridian, the progress at the Polynesian DVC Tower, as well as more generally, the sentiment from the critics, which admittedly I am one of when it comes to the hotel stuff. You know, I get how it starts to get tiring, you know, when the Disney fans are just constantly complaining about everything and this is bad, this is bad. I'm well aware when it becomes everything is bad, everything's terrible, you know, it's just very, very tiring. I'm sick of, you know, turning on the news and this is bad, this is bad. Uh, but when it comes to the hotels, this is something that I think actually matters. And I do think that there's a serious mistake being made here. Uh, so I think pointing that out is definitely worthwhile and definitely deserved and something that Disney should hear. So let me know what you guys think about all of that. I know it was a lot. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe with those notifications on. Thank you so much for watching. From the Mickey Views Magic Studio, this is Brayden. Merry Christmas and have a magical day.